Hello everyone and welcome to Forkmasters vlog for the Warhammer 5000 gaming system for the Games Workshop based in the UK and welcome to Rewind 2020 where I'm gonna go through the best type of stories in different formats that I've read or seen or experienced during the year. Uh, no, all of these stories will not necessarily have been released during 2020 because I'm a very slow consumer of uh, culture to say the least so as I'm far behind everyone else so I'm trying to catch up still so that's why most of the stories are at least one year old or older than that before I start anything I would have to acknowledge that uh, this is my technically 900th video or the the video that I acknowledge that I made over 900 videos on this channel unfortunately I was in the middle of December the most it's just out month for me ever, uh, prior to setting the grades and all that, uh, when I reach over 900 videos. And I find it amazing because we reached 800 videos uh, a couple of months ahead of schedule. And now we're like even further ahead of schedule when it comes to 900 videos. So I just wanted to acknowledge that by saying, it's over 900! Ah! But we're gonna begin with my favorite short stories that I've read this year. This year has been, uh, what do you call it, a very busy year for me when it comes to reading short stories. I tried, uh, I have an uh, iPad here at home with the digital short stories and I get panicked after seeing so many books in it. So I'm like, uh -huh, what, where gonna, where am I, what am I gonna do, what am I gonna do? So my brain just uh, have a meltdown. Uh, so I've tried to read through my short stories just to ease down on the content inside my iPad so, I, so my brain doesn't have a meltdown each, each night when I'm gonna pick a new thing to read. Uh, but of, of all the short stories that I read to this year, there's a couple that I would say earned the f number one spot together. Because uh, I think short stories are very hard to just pinpoint your one favorite as there are many who are really good for different reasons. And in none necessarily order, or in none specific order I mean, uh, where's the warp, there's a way uh, it will earn one of those spots, because it was an orc oriented story and I found, I found it very funny to say the least. So I definitely recommend that one. Uh, from the same author, I also read Choke Point, which I also recommend, uh, which was also really good. It's about uh, uh, some uh, soldiers uh, that uh, are attacking uh, uh, orcs as well. And uh, a re very special thing about it is that uh, you're, it's a first person perspective and you don't know the gender of the person that's the main character. Uh, also, uh, another short story is The Trophy, I believe it's uh, also up against Orcs. Uh, this was a very tragic story, to say the least. Uh, then two stories that are really old, but I would say are really good that I read this year, is One Hate and For The Fallen, which are Crimson Fist-oriented uh, stories written by Amdens Gebauden early in his Black Library career. I, I actually believe these are some of his first stories that he ever wrote for Black Library. And I found it very good. Uh, they are the um, crowning jewel when it comes to the Crimson Fist or oriented stories that I've read so far at least. And lastly, a, a really great short story is War in the Museum written by Robert, Robert Raff, I believe he's called. He's also an author that I would say are on the rising because he has written some goddamn good short stories in the last while that I've read uh, that I think he could be the next Amdansky Bowden. Then something that's very new this year is that I started uploading comic reviews. I haven't done that before. Uh, I did start reading them in 2019. So a lot of uh, comics uh, got eliminated just by that. Uh, I'm not sure if, even if I did my favorite no comic in last year's Rewind. Uh, but anyway, so a lot of the stories that I've reviewed and uploaded this year, unfortunately I started reading last year. So I can't pick them, but one that's very close in mind that I really like, that's um, uh, still st staying strong with me, and that's Exterminatus, a five-issue comic written by Dan Abnett about an inquisitor that's uh, trying to 
stop chaos more or less. It's really good. Uh, you get a lot of callbacks to Eisenhorn, uh, only with the other characters, uh, but with a new twist. So, yep, definitely check that out if you can. Then we can go to my favorite novella. And I read a couple, uh, a real bunch of novellas this year, but two that sticks out for me. Uh, yeah, but uh, out of those novellas that sticks out for me is first of all Severed, which I reviewed um, earlier in during the Necrovember. Uh, a story from the point of view of the Necrons. It's not the first story like that, I believe, but it's definitely one of the more unique in that sort of way. Uh, but the one that I would say is my favorite no novella of this year is definitely The Colonel's Monograph written by Graham McNeil. It was fantastic, it took me by surprise as a Warhammer horror story. You follow a very old lady as she's going through a library and it's a, what you can definitely call a character study in that sort of sense, so I definitely think that's my favorite. When it comes to other dramas, I li did listen to a couple of them, but the one that stuck up out the most for me this year was The Way Out, written by Rachel Harrison. Uh, it's also a War Warhammer horror-oriented story. Uh, I have talked about in the past uh, my, my swamps hard grips about the horror uh, label. But I think it actually fit quite well on this one, it was really good. So it, you can look forward to seeing the review for that next year's Halloween actually. So, spoilers! Then we can continue to games. Uh, as you know, I am a gamer. I have started recently uh, uploading a bunch of games to my channel as a thing to fill out. Not all of them are Warhammer related. Uh, but out of the new games that I started playing this year, we have at the top is Hitman Absolution. Sure, that game has its problems. Uh, most, the first one out of those is that uh, the online mode is shut down forever and you cannot play that anymore. And I'm really angry at the company for not removing the achievements from, uh, from uh, that game because you can't, get them any, uh, you can't get them any longer. Another problem that I have also is that uh, it's a bit buggy in its places, but it's really fun. But it's not fun in a typical Hitman way. I, I, I've compared this game and its predecessor Hitman Blood Money in that Hitman Blood Money is like G, uh, GTA uh, San Andreas where you have a lot of options and you can choose which one to go with. While Absolution is more like a card game. It has better graphics but you're more linear in your experience in the game of what you can do and not. Uh, so it's uh, definitely uh, what you call uh, up there on my top favorites, but it's far from my favorite. Another game that I played was Aeronautica Imperialis Flight Command. It came out this, sum this summer. Uh, it, it was, a, I would say, for me personally, it was a fun experience. I am very intrigued by the whole setting or the, the game about Aeronautica Imperialis. However, this game is very flawed. It has a lot of bugs, especially when it comes to the steering system. You get very frustrated at times. Uh, the music disappeared at uh, a couple of moments, uh, and I think they fixed that in a patch later on, but the, it, yeah, it had its problems on upon release. And the problem is what, that once you finish through the campaign one, which I wouldn't say is necessarily a campaign, it's more or less a skirmish mode with that campaign st uh, stamp on it. And then you have a couple of uh, the missions that they call the scenarios that I would say is actually the, 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 the campaign. But however, so as, as much as it was a good experience or fun experience, it's not a good game. So I would not place it there in the top. Then I would actually say Hitman Absolution is better. No, my top game, which I actually haven't finished yet, I'm only like two missions in out of uh, seven or so in total, but that's Hitman from 2016. That game has hit it out of the park for me, and I would say that's my top favorite game of this year. I will hopefully finish it next year, and, but yeah, so that's my favorite game of this year. Commercial break! Are you one of those that are tired of these old reviews because of the bad sound, the video quality and the video editing? Would you want to see these reviews in a new light with better audio only? Well, you're in luck because this year Fork is gonna be remaking most of his old reviews 
or at least those that he can, about novels. And you can be along on this journey, because I need to know which of the older reviews do you want to be seen remade as audio only reviews. I'm not gonna do them all and I'm definitely not gonna do the short stories or the more unpopular books. But those that are bigger that you think that deserve a better quality in audio at least, write down here below which one you want to see in a better new updated version. Check it out. Now we can continue with my favorite movie. Uh, because of the Nurgle plague that's uh, on the world right now, we, we haven't had a lot of movies. Most movies has either been delayed or put on streaming services. Um, I wouldn't say that the streaming services removes the quality of the movie necessarily. Uh, quite frankly, it just makes it easier to see them. It's only that they are behind a paywall now instead of just going to a cinema. Which can be both a good and an awful experience depending on how the people around you behave. And as we know, people are stupid and you can't uh, depend on them. But my favorite movie that I saw this year didn't come out this year. It actually came out in 2019, but it's Jojo Rabbit. I hopefully love that movie on many levels and for many reasons. And I'm gonna upload a... Uh, review of that next year I believe. I've, I've recorded it, I haven't edited it yet, so it's gonna come up later this year, some time in the spring I believe. Uh, but yes, then we can continue. My favorite new TV show that I started watching is Black Lightning, for the sole reason that that's more or less the only new TV series that I've started watching. Last year I started watching the Mandalorian TV show, I would have placed that as my favorite back then. I would have placed it as, as a favorite this year too, but it's not a new TV series, but uh, it's definitely worth mentioning, I would say. But the, a new TV sh series that I've seen is Black Lightning. I, I really like that, how they handle very uh, hard topics that's important to talk about, especially considering that we have the Black Lives Matter movement during the summer. So yeah, it's very important that we bring those discussions up again. Now we reach the final part, which is my favorite novel. And this is a hard one because I would have to admit that I haven't read a lot of novels this year. It mostly has been shorter stories or novellas. And uh, uh, once I've actually read a novel, they haven't been the most best out of them. Uh, so the first one I would have to mention is not my favorite, but it's definitely up there, and that's Legacy of Dorn. It's a Crimson Fist story taking place during the Battle of Ring's World, where we follow a squad of uh, Crimson Fists and humans as they try to work together. It uh, works around with a lot of time jumps, um, but it, uh, it develops the characters kind of well, well, I would say, and the story is it's very good. Uh, but I think the story that gripped me the most when it comes to novels is definitely the last part of the Path of the Eldar series or the trilogy, which is Path of the Outcast. And I really, uh, how you call it, uh, I was really taken by that story in that I really related to the character. He's like, uh, the main character of that story, he is an, um, a person that seeks for freedom uh, only to realize that you are never free you're always um, what you call it uh, stuck under someone else com under someone else's command or someone else's grip like even if you're free you're still not free and uh, it was very interesting to look at that uh, novel and see from that point of view as I could relate to that that yeah sure I have a home but I'm forced to work, I have to get money, I need so I can eat and live here. And even if I enjoy my work, it's not perfect. There's a lot of things that uh, could improve with my work. Uh, so, uh, but I'm also privi privileged to have these things, uh, unlike many others. Just the fact that I have three weeks of not working right now, so I can do these types of videos on my spare time, says a lot how uh, well privileged I am. So, yeah, but, but uh, so that would I say is my favorite novel that I read this year, The Path of, Path of the Outcast. Yeah, but it comes to a close, and this will be my last video for this year. I want to say it's been a tough year, it has been hard on us all, uh, but we need to continue and fight. We need to stand together against oppression, against racism, against sexism, against jerks, against idiots. And hopefully we will overcome and we will be better out for it. Um, but we need to be better. 
need to be better. I want to thank you all for following me this year once again. Uh, I gained a lot of new subscribers involuntarily because I did not, don't want my kids uh, from work following me here, but not much I can do about that right now. Uh, so thank you very much for following me. Hopefully you will follow me along next year in 2021. We'll see what we'll experience then and what we have to look forward to. But with that said, stay safe and happy new years. See you around everybody. Bye bye.